So I will admit over the past, what, two months, this has very much been the BMW, AMG, and Porsche show. But to my defense, I did share one spot of practicality with an EV in that mix. So let's take this opportunity to go like deep into practical with a new baby buggy. This one is entirely new. It's a Hyundai Santa Fe, something we've never looked at on the show ever before. Uh, there are more changes here than I expected, so let's do a full tech review. But before we dive into that, of course, some numbers from our old friend Michael Bryan, who runs all of product planning for Hyundai and is a pilot and a proper car guy. Uh, he was saying that the segment, what he calls SUVs, I call them crossovers, the segment has grown overall, meaning all brands, 4.6% over the past couple of years. However, in Hyundai alone, to kind of give you an idea of where they're going, grown 9.6%. So what was it, the Kona that we saw recently in Hawaii, or really Kona, and now a Santa Fe, but not in New Mexico, in Utah. So let's start with the familiar, and that is the two engines that are on offer, both four cylinders. Let's start with the, the low horsepower model, which is actually the bigger engine. So it's a 2.4 liter, four cylinder. 185 horsepower comes in at 6,000 RPM, and 178 pounds of torque comes in at 4,000 RPM. So it's a bit of an ouch, which means you'd have to work that engine to get power that's usable around town. Then there's the more interesting one, which is actually the smaller of the two, and that's the two liter turbocharged gasoline direct injected engine. Uh, that one's 235 horsepower, comes in at 6,000 RPM as well. But then there's the torque, 260, that comes in at a very low 1,450 RPM, stays flat all the way up to 30. 3,500 RPM. Now this is the one we're going to drive in the coming full first drive review, so make sure you come back for that. But then there's the transmission, and do you remember in the Elantra Eco and the Sonata Eco, uh, those episodes I shared with you a seven-speed automatic, a dual clutch, but what was interesting there, it's a transmission that's actually designed and built by Hyundai Kia Group, which is unusual for a car manufacturer to build their own transmission. Well, this is the same case here, but it's an all-new transmission. It's an eight-speed automatic, and instead of two clutches, it has a torque converter. So inside, it picks up the same design themes that we've seen from Chris Chapman and his team down in Irvine that's been cascading throughout the entire Hyundai lineup over the past couple of years. Here, it works incredibly well. The general look and feel is good. Dashboard is low, high visibility, all that kind of stuff. But there are some things that work really well and some things that don't work so well. Like, for example, it's got all the bits that we've seen in other Hyundais, like Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, and really a lot of fancy stuff like cooled seats or wireless charging for your phone and then even contrast stitching which uh, i am shocked it is in a vehicle like this but very thankful that it is even here they've put in this like stone finish that works incredibly well in this sort of orange and gray vehicle especially with the orange contrast stitch to pick up the exterior but then there's some color and trim and textures that don't work so well. Like, for example, you could imagine the fight this was to have this soft touch dash here, here, and here. But then there's some really hard plastic here and here that's high in the dash. Like, I'm not mad at a car manufacturer who puts it down here in the map pocket where you're never going to see it. But if you spent so much time working on it here and here... I would think spend the extra, what, 10 to 20 bucks to make this better, especially when you have this very useful shelf here. It just, it, it takes away from an otherwise really good execution. And speaking of things that actually work really well, the IP is completely different. So when we've been driving Hyundais and Kias over the past, I want to say six years now, the IP looks the same, meaning the instruments themselves, which is a good thing. They're kind of backlit here. It's more stylish, but it's still analog, and it's got a TFT screen in the center that can be configured either analog or digital style, so you can change it around as well as different pieces of information. Oh, and there's one more thing. And that is the back seats. They move all on their own. So you can put some more storage space back there and torture your friends, or you can be nice to your passengers and give them extra knee room. So the bits that impact the driving dynamics, this sounds more like the cars we've been driving over the past two months, 
rather than a front wheel drive based baby buggy. In the front, it's McPherson struts with coil springs and believe it or not, a stabilizer bar in the front. Then in the back, it's a multi-link unit also with a stabilizer bar. Uh, the wheels, three choices on offer, 17, 18, 19. The profile of the tires change based on the size of the wheels. The brakes, 320 millimeter diameter in the front, 305 in the back. And then there's the construction, which is high strength steel because I've told you many times, Hyundai is not a car company. It really is a steel company masquerading as a car company. And this used to be, according to our friend Mike O'Brien, 58% high strength steel. Now it's 67% high strength steel, which will have an impact when we drive it in the coming full first drive review. So make sure you come back for that. And then there's the overall dimensions. Now this is interesting because it's a 108.7 inch wheelbase as a basis of a comparison to Murano, which is kind of a direct competitor and a big car in the segment, is 111.2. Uh, then there's the overall length, which is 187.8. And back to the Murano, that's a little bit bigger at 192.8. Do you remember when we drove the CX-3 like a gazillion years ago. That was one of the first of these like crossover type vehicles that had a predictive all wheel drive system. This is the first one in the Hyundai lineup that now has a predictive all wheel drive system. And then there's the transmission itself. So we talked about how Hyundai manufactures it. Well, one of the things that they went for was less friction. And I I don't want to sound like Fletch, but it, it really is all ball bearings these days. They made a conscious shift from roller bearings to, to ball bearings. Really. What impact does all of this have on the daily use case of a 2019 Hyundai Santa Fe? Here, we need to take into account the specs of the two engines on offer, suspension pieces, and of course, the construction method, because when you up the content of high strength steel, you lower the overall weight. And that is indeed the case here. Uh, 3,591 pounds for the most basic 2.4 non-turbo front wheel drive crossover. As a humorous aside, uh, all of the documentation that I had to review to get ready for these two episodes and from all of my time with the Hyundai folks up in Utah, they kept on referring to it as a sport utility vehicle. It's not. It's a front wheel drive crossover, uh, which ranges to 4,085 pounds for the Uptown Ultimate Model all-wheel drive 2.0-liter turbo, which is the one we're going to feature in the coming full first drive review. Now, as a basis of comparison, let's look at the two 800-pound gorillas in the space, which is the Murano and the Edge. Uh, you go back to the 2.4 front-wheel drive, the Santa Fe is 200 pounds lighter than the Murano and 400 pounds lighter than the Edge. Then we get into the complete reason for being for these things, which is not just being a family car, it's being an efficient family car. And I feel like these guys are getting beaten up a lot as of late, and rightfully so, because they didn't just overstate fuel economy, they cheated about it. But these guys have gotten all of the headlines for the past, what, three years. Everybody's kind of forgot that other car manufacturers, they didn't cheat, they just overstated their fuel economy. And I feel like that lesson's kind of been learned by a number of them, including Hyundai, because they have stated very realistic fuel economy estimates for the Santa Fe. Going back to the 2.4 front wheel drive, uh, 22, 29, 25 combined is the one we're going to drive 19, 24, 21 combined. Uh, so very realistic when you consider the size of the vehicle we're talking about. Then I do need to leave you with a, a very Surprising fun fact here, I had no idea that this segment, a two row crossover segment, is 1.1 million units annually. I thought for sure three row was like way bigger. Turns out this one is the bigger of, of the two segments. Uh, so I am going to leave you with a question here. And the question is this, design. Hyundai went very aggressive on the design on this. I feel this is a segment while very crowded and everybody is very close to each other in terms of features and specs and what the things can do. I feel like Hyundai has completely separated themselves on design here. So I am just one man. I'm a little bit biased because it was designed here in California, which does make a difference. So I'm going to turn this around to you guys and ask you, do you like the design or do you not like the design? And if you do, why? And if you don't, why not? And you know what? What would you change if you don't like it? 
And for good measure, do you drive a compact crossover? I mean, in the comments below or via our social media, Moto Man TV on Word, Moto Man TV on Word, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And until I see you next time, bis später.